At last, Volvo has created a properly premium executive segment large estate car that could really take the fight to prestige German rivals. This V90 features the kind of elegance, craftsmanship and technology we've never previously seen from this Swedish manufacturer. Safe, efficient, clever, practical and stylish, it's yet another model that re-establishes this Scandinavian maker as a credibly prestigious automotive brand. Think of a big boxy estate car. Well, you're probably thinking of a Volvo, though maybe perhaps not one quite as sleek as this. For quite a few years now, the brand's been making compact station wagons that don't conform to the usual squareical stereotype, but this is the first time the brand has brought us a really large model with something of a sense of style. So welcome to the V90. Volvo, of course, has a long and illustrious heritage in producing large estates, one which stretches all the way back to 1953 and the Dewitt PV445 wagon. That was replaced by the classic Amazon model in 1962, which in turn gave way to the 145 series in 1967. But the big Volvo estate that many people of my generation best remember is the big bumpered 245265 series of 1974, the car that upwardly mobile Margot and Jerry Ledbetter drove in the BBC sitcom The Good Life. Remember that? Every middle class Surbiton couple had to have one, and so did every antiques dealer. In 1985, we got the ugly US-inspired 740 and 760 models, restyled in 1990 and sold as the 940 and 960 series. Only with the introduction of front-wheel drive in the 850 estate of 1993, however, did things really take a step forward. A car that was relaunched as the V70 in 1996. The first proper purpose-designed V70 followed in 2000, replaced in 2007 by the third generation version that sold until this all-new V90 model was launched in the summer of 2016. Originally, nearly all of these designs had one thing in common, class-leading carriage space. Well, this V90's got plenty of that too, but it's no longer a standard setting executive state in that regard. Volvo having realised that greater priorities for likely buyers may well lie not only in more fashionable looks, but also in efficiency, comfort and connectivity. In this case, these things come courtesy of the SPA, Scalable Product Architecture Modular Underpinnings, that the Swedish brand is using to underpin all its latest designs, including the S90 saloon version of this model and its XC90 luxury SUV stablemate. Light, stiff, sophisticated, this platform claims to make this V90 better to drive than any previous large Volvo station wagon. But what's probably more likely to sell you this car is the classy Scandinavian cabin and the really astonishingly comprehensive levels of safety that's provided as standard. Perhaps the most interesting part of this contender though lies with the engineering you'll find beneath its bonnet. All this model's key rivals use six-cylinder units in more powerful models, but Volvo is committed to an innovative Drive E engine program that's based around a single four-cylinder, two-litre downsized format. Now, if you're looking at a Pokia V90 variant, that means class-leading levels of efficiency, especially in the case of the top T8 twin-engine petrol-electric plug-in hybrid version, which, with over 400 brake horsepower on tap, is one of the very quickest ways to plump up your green credentials in the company car park. So in short, a lot's gone into V90 motoring and across the model range, that effort should be enough to create in this car a very credible alternative to the established executive estates from Audi, Mercedes and BMW. Ought these German brands be concerned by what Volvo has to offer here though? Let's find out. So, what should your expectations be when it comes to driving one of these? Well, on one hand, moaning that a big Volvo estate can't be thrown around the lanes like a sports saloon does seem a bit ridiculous. Yet, as the Swedish maker knows well, similarly priced German rivals like uh, BMW's 5 Series Touring and Audi's A6 Avant have shown that it really is possible to produce a car like this with plenty of carriage capacity, yet at the same time, quite an accomplished uh, dynamic repertoire. 
So it simply isn't good enough for the Scandinavian mark to produce tank-like handling in this day and age, and it doesn't. Much of the credit for that lies with the light, strong and sophisticated SPA scalable product architecture underpinnings that really are a world away from the heavy, clunky chassis that this model's V70 predecessor had to lug about. The engines are lighter and cleverer too, all of them just two litres and four cylinders in size. Now that might not sound like a great recipe for responsive performance, but the very competitive spec sheet stats suggest otherwise, correcting so many of us who've had it wrong all these years, assuming that engine BHP is governed by cubic capacity and the number of cylinders you have. Now, according to Volvo, performance is actually determined by how much air and fuel it's possible to get through those combustion chambers. Having realized that, the brand has standardized its mechanical configuration across the board and concentrated instead on developing it in all kinds of clever ways. The V90 range starts with the engine that most buyers will choose, a 190bhp D4 diesel that transmits its torque to the tarmac via an 8-speed Geartronic automatic gearbox. Like Audi does with its rival A6 Avant model, Volvo is offering buyers uh, the choice of either front or four-wheel drive formats, which tells you right up front that the Swedish brand has no real interest in trying to match the rear-driven dynamic talents of segment favorites like the BMW 5 Series Touring and the Mercedes E-Class Estate. To get four-wheel drive with the D4 engine, you have to choose the V90 in its mildly SUV-like cross-country form, a variant that features a 65mm ride height increase. Otherwise, V90 D4s come only in front-driven form. If you can afford a little more, the alternative mainstream engine um, is the D5 Power Pulse unit that uses the same 2-litre diesel but increases its power to 235bhp. D5 variants can only be ordered with four-wheel drive to create the package that we're trying here. Settle into your drive in a V90 and there's an overriding feel of maturity that we think many older buyers in this market may well rather like. Now, if you're at that stage of life and you're more Kenneth Branagh than John Travolta, greying alluringly at the temples with an outlook perspective that's sensibly Swedish, then you're going to absolutely love it. Now, you aren't served up anything that encourages much driving involvement, but in comparison, there's unruffled poise and exemplary refinement. You get supple standards of ride control from the soft suspension too, enough to ease you beautifully over low speed obstacles like sleeping policemen, although the damping can get a little unsettled by higher speed tarmac tears. And that is something you can dial out by specifying the optional 4C chassis electronic rear air suspension package that also adds adaptive damping into the standard drive mode settings driving dynamic system. We've got air suspension here, which means that this car's drive mode settings can tweak the ride quality as well as tailoring throttle response, steering feel and auto gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Now, unless you want to use the individual option and personalize all these settings yourself, there are three main modes to this system. Uh, the ones that you'll be most commonly using being either comfort or the frugally orientated eco option. The third choice, dynamic, will sharpen things up a little and selecting that mode is the only way you can get a rev counter to show up on the virtual instrument dials, which along with the absence of the usual steering wheel gear change paddles, probably tells you pretty much all you need to know about this car's dynamic priorities. As we suggested earlier, if you do select this press on option and start to push your V90 a bit, then you'll probably find the quality of its responses a world away from those of any other large Volvo you've ever driven. You'd expect this to be a consummate motorway cruiser, and it is, but it's more surprising to find that there's actually some fun to be had from threading this Swedish state down a typical twisting British B road. There's plenty of grip and traction, and cornering body roll is much less of an issue than we thought it might be, although the V90 certainly feels its size when negotiating tighter turns. In fact, were it not for the slightly vague steering, we'll be tempted to suggest that there's pretty much all the dynamic ability here that you get in, say, an Audi A6 Avant in this class. As I suggested earlier, there's certainly no issues with performance from the twin turbo diesels. The D4 variant capable of 62 miles an hour from rest and 8.5 seconds on route to 140 miles an hour. 
If the company's paying though, you'll probably want to upgrade yourself to this D5 version, which will respond a little more quickly to your right foot, not only because of its extra power, but also due to a bit of clever technology. Here, an ingenious system called Power Pulse is used to overcome turbo lag, uh, that momentary delay in response you sometimes experience with powerful turbocharged diesel engines. It uses compressed air, which is stored in a small tank in the engine bay and automatically replenished. And this spools up the turbocharger so the car responds as soon as you press the accelerator. That helps a V90 D5 get to 62 miles an hour in 7.2 seconds flat on the way to 145 miles an hour. True rival six-cylinder Mercedes E350D estate or BMW 530D touring competitors would go quicker, but the fact that buyers of those models are limited to a rear-driven format means that they will flounder when conditions turn damp. There are no such issues in a V90 D5, thanks to the non-negotiable standard fitment of all-wheel drive. To go quicker than that in this Volvo requires even cleverer technology. Two engines, in fact, hence the T8 twin engine badging applied to the top version of this car with its petrol electric powertrain and plug-in hybrid usability. In fact, there are actually three engines if you're going to be pedantic about it and count the 25 bhp starter motor generator that pitches in from time to time to smooth any gaps in torque delivery between the two main power sources. And one of those is the 320 bhp turbocharged and supercharged petrol unit uh, borrowed from the conventional T6 petrol model that Volvo doesn't import here. In a V90 T8 though, it's assisted by a separate engine at the back, an 87 bhp electric motor powered by a battery pack that's neatly packaged away in the transmission tunnel. It's all enough to deliver a set of stats that's well, rather hard to get your head around. An enormous 407 bhp combined power output offsets the extra weight of all those mechanicals. So 62 miles an hour from rest can still be dispatched in around 7 seconds on the way to 150 miles an hour. Yet there's also the potential for the kind of fuel and CO2 readings that theoretically could equal those of a frugal super mini. Well, whichever of those two extremes you reach on a V90 T8 will depend on your choice between the five driving settings that owners of this plug-in hybrid model are offered. Ultimate speed is delivered by a power mode that sees both the petrol and electric units permanently working together. Alternatively, there are four other drive choices. A hybrid setting that sees the two engines cutting in and out as necessary, an all-wheel drive mode that gives you permanent 4x4 traction, plus a pure electric setting that only uses a battery power and can take you up to 28 miles, and that's more than most people's daily commuting distance on a single charge. And there's even a save option so that on a longer trip you can hold on to that charge until you get to the city driving that you might have to do at the end of the journey. For years, people like us were told that Volvo was a brand every bit the equal of its prestige German rivals. It now turns out, though, that the company didn't believe that any more than we really did. But it does now. Company boss Hakan Samuelsson is candid when he says, with the V90, for the very first time, we have a true premium competitor. And he's right, too. You feel that the very first time you see this car. The design language is apparently taken from contemporary Scandinavian culture, and from most angles, the resulting shape looks elegant and sophisticated. With its short overhangs, its long wheelbase, and its relatively low roof line, there's an air of confident assurance here, yet also a look that's uniquely Swedish, with a muscular shoulder line that is distinctly Volvo. There's certainly no doubt as to the brand origins here at the front, where the unusual LED front headlights immediately catch your eye. Their so-called Hammer of Thor design, emphasized by distinctive hammer-shaped daytime lighting guides that also flash orange when you indicate. Uh, these flank uh, a floating style so-called piano black waterfall front grille that's complete with a redesigned version of Volvo's traditional Ironmark logo at its center. Further down is a subtler lower grille that's flanked by LED front fog lights on this plusher version. Move to the side and you can better appreciate that strong shoulder line. It's just about the only thing that visually connects this car to its far less stylish V70 predecessor. 
follow it rearwards and just beyond the C pillar, the window line takes a gentle sweep upwards, culminating in a distinctive kink just ahead of the line of the tailgate. Uh, the long bonnet and the slightly uh, lower roof line are supposed to suggest power and grace. And whatever your perspective on that, there's no doubt that the clear, minimalist surfaces give this Volvo a classy air. You get 17 inch alloy wheels at the bottom of the range, but we'd want to look at filling these arches a little more substantially, perhaps with these 18 inch rims, or maybe even with the 19, 20, or even 21 inch rims that your dealer will offer you. With any of the really large sizes though, you'll need to budget in the extra cost of air suspension if you're not to subsequently rather hobble your car with an over firm ride. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. Now, where the old V70's underpinnings could be traced from a humble Ford Mondeo, this V90 uses basically the same SPA scalable product architecture underpinnings you'd find in Volvo's huge XC90 luxury SUV. Uh, one reason, perhaps, why this car is slightly bigger than the class norm. The structure that the SPA platform sits on is certainly very advanced. 40% of it fashioned from hot formed boron steel, the strongest found in the motor industry. No other brand uses as much of this very safe, very strong metal. Uh, now let's move to the rear where it's very un-Volvo estate-like. Where one of the brand's older station wagons would have featured a bluff vertical tailgate, there's instead the kind of shallower rear glass line that you find on a typical German rival. Uh, you'd expect that this might have an impact on carriage capacity, and it does. If you operate the standard electrically powered tailgate, it can be activated with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper on this top inscription version. Uh, a 560 litre boots revealed, and that's actually 15 litres less than was provided by the old V70. Still, that figure remains very comparable with the capacity you get from rival BMW 5 Series Touring and Audi A6 Avant models. It is, though, 110 litres shy of what you get in the Mercedes E Class estate. Still, forget the numbers and just enjoy the usability. The cargo divider that raises out of the boot floor and the way that you can raise that floor on these little struts so that muddy items can foul a part of the cargo area which can afterwards be shut away out of sight if you can't be bothered to clean it. Uh, you get a proper spare wheel beneath that boot floor. Mercedes, take note. And there's a ski hatch for long, narrow items. Uh, this optional retractable tow bar springs out at the press of a button and there are more buttons to help you retract the rear seat head restraints and seat backs so activate them and a completely flat cargo area is revealed okay so 1526 liters in size it's the smallest area on offer in the class but we don't think many potential owners will mind too much those who do will be directed towards volvo's xc90 suv which offers up to 1868 liters <sighs> So let's take a seat up front where it really is very nice indeed. The work of Volvo's British interior design director, Robin Page. He's created a cabin that's simple, elegant, very uncluttered, with only eight buttons on the fascia. The remaining functions you'd normally access through confusing rows of little switches have been relocated into menu options that lie behind the easy to use icons you'll find on this smart infotainment color touchscreen that's presented portrait style on the center console like the system you'll find in futuristic Tesla models. Uh, we've called it a touchscreen. In fact, the swipe functionality of this large 9-inch display works by intersecting light rays rather than touch, so you don't actually need to touch the monitor and cover it with prints. You merely put your finger near it. Now, that means you can operate it wearing gloves, and that's an important consideration in cold climates, such as this car's home market. Now that's assuming you don't want to use the system's voice controlled functionality, which does seem to be a lot more intuitive in this car than it is in some rivals. Whatever your preferred mode of operation, you can use this setup not only to access the usual navigation, uh, stereo, phone and informational features, but also a wide selection of cloud-based applications for things like internet radio and updates on everything from weather reports to parking prices. It even has its own bespoke Spotify app for seamless music streaming.
You'll glimpse more high-tech screen technology through the three-spoke uh, multifunction steering wheel, where the normal conventional instruments have been replaced by virtual ones in an active TFT crystal driver's information display. Entry-level models get this set up in 8-inch form, but as an option or as standard on plusher variants, you can have this larger, more detailed 12.3-inch layout. The head-up display we have fitted here is optional, development of which apparently influenced the design of this rather ugly steering wheel. It's a pity no alternative is offered. That apart, this cabin is an aesthetic triumph. It's immaculately made and full of premium touches, like this diamond-cut start-stop control switch and this slatted cover for the centre dash compartment. We think that the cabin looks best when these trim sections are finished with this hand-sanded wood panelling. Volvo offers birch and walnut options. Look around you and the intricate detailing continues. Carpets inspired by thick Swedish rugs, interior colours influenced by the Scandinavian landscape and superbly comfortable seats that can be specified to heat, ventilate or massage you with power adjustable side support and front cushion extensions. And through it all, charismatic little side of brand heritage never far away. The little Swedish flag sewn into the driver's seat stitching and the since 1959 legend on the belt buckle reminding you who invented the three-point belt. We like the technical niceties too. The clean zone interior air quality system, for example. Now this automatically switches to recirculation mode if outside conditions change, uh, say in a polluted city centre or when you enter a smoky tunnel. The 360-degree parking camera system is another nice-to-have feature, one of the best setups of its type we've tried. And we'd also point potential buyers towards the optional 18-speaker, 1400-watt Bowers & Wilkins sound system that can play your music through three modes, studio, individual stage, and concert hall. Now, the latter setting aims to replicate the experience of sitting in the Jotaborg concert hall and works particularly well for orchestral or classical music. There really aren't many better setups of available on any car in the world. Are there issues? Well, not many. Some of the plastics lower down the dash are of a lower quality than you might want. And it's a pity that from launch, uh, Volvo decided that buyers should have to pay extra for the kind of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity that's now, well, standard in much cheaper cars. Uh, there's nowhere to put your sunglasses either, although otherwise cabin stowage is really quite acceptable. There's a reasonably sized glove box, properly shaped door pockets, and a compartment in front of the driver's right knee. Uh, you also get a concealed coin tray just in front of the gear lever and two cup holders behind that. Those are positioned in front of a spacious storage box that incorporates a USB point and an aux in point. Time to take a seat in the back. Now, given the extra body length that this V90 enjoys over some of its rivals, you'd expect it to feel pretty spacious back here. And by and large, it is. A clever design of front seat back further freeing up leg and knee room for rear seat folk. Now, a few of our testers felt a touch hemmed in by a slightly lower slung window line than is used in this segment. A feeling that might have been more widely shared had it not been for the extra light that's afforded by this particular car's optional glass sunroof. As is unfortunately quite common on cars in this class, you'll struggle to accommodate three adults over longer distances because of this very prominent centre transmission tunnel. Two folk though should be very comfortable indeed, and they're provided with this neatly designed central armrest incorporating storage for valuables and pop-out twin cup holders. You do wonder though what you'd do as a passenger back here if you needed a USB point to plug in your phone or some kind of electronic device. Volvo has forgotten to provide that, so rear seat folk only get this 12 volt port, optionally replaceable by a 230 volt three pin plug socket if you wanted. Other options back here include side window blinds and seat heating. Expect to pay somewhere in the £35,000 to £45,000 bracket for conventionally engined diesel V90 models, which means that for this estate derivative, Volvo is requiring a premium of around £2,000 over its mechanically identical S90 saloon. Now, the brand isn't selling the mainstream petrol V90 variants here that it offers in other markets, but we do get the top T8 twin-engine plug-in petrol-electric hybrid derivative, although for that, you'll need a likely budget in the 50 to 55,000 pound bracket. 
Most, though, will settle for one of the two-litre drive E diesels. Now, both come only with eight-speed automatic transmission, and there's a choice of either the entry-level 190 bhp D4 variant, or for a premium of around £7,000, you can have the D5 Power Pulse version of this engine, in which form its output is boosted to 235 bhp. All D5 models come with all-wheel drive as standard. Go for a D4 variant though and you only get all-wheel drive if you opt for the cross-country spec, a trim level that delivers mild SUV styling tweaks and a 65mm ride height increase. The cross-country price premium over entry-level momentum trim is just under £5,000 if you go for the D4 engine, taking account of the fact that all-wheel drive is being added to that specification. Since, as we've just said, all D5 engines are mated to 4x4 traction, if you choose this more powerful unit and only costs around £1,500 to upgrade from momentum to cross-country trim. So let's take a closer look at the overall V90 value proposition and let's base our thinking to start with around the D4 diesel version since that's what the vast majority of likely buyers will be looking at. The asking figure for this variant in entry-level form is almost identical to what you pay for rival BMW 520D Touring, Audi A6 Avant 2.0-litre TDI and Jaguar XF Sport Brake 2.0-litre D competitors, all three of whom uh, deliver efficiency figures that are very similar to those of a V90, but arguably lack the cool, understated Scandinavian style that for some potential buyers will make this Volvo a more distinctive choice. Now, if you want to get a higher standard of running cost efficiency in this class, you'll have to stretch to a Mercedes E220D estate, but one of those requires a £1,700 premium over a V90D4, and it doesn't come as well equipped. Are there other options? Well, not really. A Skoda Superb estate is similar in concept and larger in size, but we can't imagine too many potential V90 buyers considering it. The few that do will find that in top spec Laurent en Clément form, the 2 litre TDI 190 PS DSG version of that Czech model is priced at about the same level as a directly comparable V90 D4, but it costs slightly more to run and it'll depreciate much faster. Otherwise, your only uh, options lie with mid-sized SUVs. But if you wanted one of those, you'd be looking at Volvo's XC60, not this V90. If anything, the V90's value proposition is even stronger in this pricier D5 all-wheel drive, guys. Yes, this is still a four-cylinder model that at this level must compete with six-cylinder rivals. But as a buyer, the payoff for that is that you get class-leading levels of efficiency. You also get standard all-wheel drive for a fraction less than you'd pay for rival two-wheel drive models like Jaguar's XF Sport Brake 3.0-litre D and BMW's 530D Touring. And over £5,000 less than you pay for a two-wheel drive Mercedes E350D Estate that's both thirstier and dirtier. And none of these three rival brands can offer you all-wheel traction mated to this kind of power. The only maker that can is Audi, whose A6 Avant 3.0-litre TDI Quattro 272 PS model costs slightly more to run and about £5,000 more to buy. As for the top T8 twin-engine V90 model, well, in many respects, that's really a class of its own. I mean, true, you can get plug-in versions of new-generation BMW 5 Series Touring and Mercedes E-Class estate models and pay slightly less than a V90 T8 would cost you, but you won't be getting anywhere near the power and performance that the Volvo will offer. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a V90 that you really want, well, then you're going to need to know just exactly what's included in the standard spec. And, well, there's plenty, even if you opt for an entry-level momentum trim. Now, we've already mentioned the standard eight-speed auto gearbox. Other features you'd expect from a car of this class include things like rear parking sensors, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, alloy wheels that are 17 inches in size on the D4 and 18 inches on this D5. There's also an alarm, a roof spoiler, uh, LED headlights that at night can bend with the road and dip themselves automatically. Estate orientated stuff includes a power operated tailgate, roof rails, an automatic load cover, a cargo divider with a grocery bag holder and a power folding rear bench with a ski hatch. Other cabin features include full leather trim and a heated driver's seat with powered height and lumbar support. Plus you get two zone electronic climate control, an auto dimming rear view mirror, 
keyless start, adaptive cruise control and an 8 inch active TFT crystal driver's information display to replace the conventional instrument dials. You also get Volvo's drive mode settings system. Now this allows you to alter the steering feel, the throttle response and the gear shift timings based on the way that you want to drive uh, via comfort, dynamic, eco and individual settings. And of course, there's plenty of media connectivity on offer. Most of it activated through the clever Sensors Connect infotainment system that's fitted as standard and accessed via a large nine inch center console portrait format touchscreen. Now from here or via voice control, you can enjoy a 10 speaker, 330 watt high performance sound system with DAB digital radio. In addition, there's a census navigation system with traffic information and European mapping, plus, as you'd expect, Bluetooth phone compatibility and USB and AUX imports. We'd be tempted by the direct alternative to Momentum trim, the cross-country all-wheel drive model with its SUV styling cues. Now going for this variant gives you a body kit with silver front and rear skid plates, wheel arch extensions and charcoal coloured mouldings for the lower sills and the side doors. With this variant you also get larger 18-inch double-spoke alloy wheels, uh, larger door mirrors and unique upholstery stitching. Now, should you go further and consider an upgrade to the pricier R design or top inscription trim levels? Well, we think carefully before you do that. Sure, going for one of these pricier variants gets you the larger 12.3 inch active TFT crystal driver's information display for the instrument vehicle that we'd really want, but you can add that in as an affordable option on momentum and cross country models. Otherwise, the main features fitted to our design and inscription derivatives tend to be nice to have, but not essential items. Uh, as you might expect, there's sportier trimming on our design models and a more luxuriously orientated look inside and out at inscription level. Both these spec packages give you the larger 18 inch wheels plus multicolour theatre interior lighting and LED front fog lights. Plus on an R design model you get a lowered sports chassis, although that is something that we think many V90 owners would probably rather do without. At inscription level there's softer Nappa leather for the upholstery, uh, plus there's a keyless entry system and a hands-free feature the powered tailgate that allows you to open it with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. As already suggested though, our preference would probably be to stick to a standard momentum model and then add in a few well-chosen options. And of these, in our view, the most important extra you could specify is the electronic air suspension system. Now you can specify this on its own simply to get the benefit of the self-leveling functionality that'll help with really heavy loads, or as part of the active 4C chassis package that'll work through that drive mode setting system I mentioned earlier. And via the same four modes, adds the functionality of being able to alter the ride to suit the road you're on and also the mood you're in. So you'll be wafting along magic carpet style in a way that really suits the demeanour of this car. Otherwise, it's mainly a case of selecting between the various extra cost packs that Volvo offers. This car, for example, has the winter pack, which supplies heat for the steering wheel, the front screen and the windscreen washer nozzles, along with headlamp washers. It's also possible to further embellish this pack with features like a head-up display and active bending headlights that turn with the bends. As for other optional packs, well, if you've got kids, you might want to look at the family pack that protects the second row with powered child locks and window sun curtains, while also adding integrated seat booster cushions for the two outer seats. Plus, we'd be tempted by the Xenium pack that gives you a powered glass sunroof, uh, a parking camera, 360 degree surround view setup, and a park assist pilot system. And that's able to help you locate and then automatically steer you into the tightest spaces. If you'd rather order individual items from the options list, then we'd recommend you look at the Volvo On Call app first. Now this gives you stolen vehicle tracking and an emergency breakdown call system. Plus it enables you to create a Wi-Fi hotspot in the car and plan journeys in advance at home or at your desk and then download them into the car. Now with that on-call phone app, you can also monitor your V90's fuel level, uh, log journey data, check when the car's due for service, and even lock or unlock the doors, all via your smartphone. 
And talking of smartphones, you'll probably want to add in either the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto systems that allow you to duplicate the functionality of that handset onto the center dash display. Other key options you might like include four zone electronic climate control that also calls the glove box, a keyless entry system, uh, laminated side windows, a heated steering wheel, dark tinted rear side windows, an auxiliary fuel fired heater and for rear seat passengers, iPod holders and a useful 230 volt three pin socket. Practical options that will particularly appeal to estate buyers include a retractable tow bar uh, plus a, a range of roof boxes and racks for roof boxes, uh, skis, snowboards, bikes and so on. The luggage compartment can be embellished with an illuminated tailgate scuff plate and separated from the passenger area by either a protective steel grill or a dog gate, depending on your needs. There's even a dog harness. Uh, we'd want one of the various mats that can be added to protect that cargo floor too. Now, as for things you choose to really spoil yourself, well, there's a choice of metallic and premium metallic paint finishes, and you'll have to pay extra for one of those unless you want the only no-cost colour option, which is flat white. Now, you can complement the shade you choose with colour-coordinated lower body mouldings, plus there are optional styling kits to suit the various trim levels. Uh, there's also a range of alloy wheels up to 21 inches in size, and to add the finishing touch to the cabin, a choice of carbon fibre or walnut or dark flame birch interior wood inlays. We also want to point you towards the option that we'd most like to have on this car, the 18-speaker Bowers & Wilkins premium stereo setup. Developed by former music producer Michael Adenauer, it is described as the best sound system on four wheels, and it features a dual-like tweeter on top of the dashboard, along with a 12-channel 1,400-watt amplifier. And you might want to settle back and enjoy all that on more luxurious Nappa leather-trimmed seats that at the front can include a massage system and power adjustment in all directions with memory settings. Rear seat folk can enjoy heated seats too. So, on to safety, which, as you'd expect, is a Volvo strong point. A subtle reminder of that fact found with the since 1959 references on the seatbelt buckles, this being the year that the brand invented the three-point seatbelt we all now use. Today, the company continues its safety ambitions with the most daring and far-reaching safety objective in the industry, that by 2020, no one should ever be killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo. A ramping up to that means the need for a whole new level of safety in the company's future models. A process that starts right here with two segment unique IntelliSafe features that are standard across the V90 range. Runoff road protection detects that you've lost control and left the road, pre-tensioning the seat belts and priming the standard seven airbags, twin front, side and curtain bags, plus a driver's knee bag. What is unique about this setup though is that if the car's launched into the air and thumps down, as often happens in such a situation, a little mini shock absorber in the front seat frame protects your body from the damage that might otherwise be inflicted on your lower spine. While Volvo's usual WHIPS whips protection guards against whiplash on your neck. Now we mentioned two world safety firsts, the other is the large animal detection feature that's built into the standard city safety autonomous braking system. Now you might think that there's a relatively low likelihood of you ever hitting a large animal but Volvo doesn't and with good reason. Now, apparently a third of all accidents in Sweden are of this type so there's long been a genuine need for someone to do something about it. This particular setup was originally developed to deal with elk and moose but for our shores it's said to be particularly effective at warning you when deer are approaching from the side of a dark road ahead. Uh, we should brief you on the other, perhaps more familiar elements of City Safety 2. Uh, this being one of those setups that uses a combined camera and radar unit at the top of the windscreen to scan the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards, uh, be they pedestrians or objects or vehicles that are either moving or stationary. Now, if something like this is detected, you'll be warned as the brakes are primed. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied, avoiding a collision entirely if the speed is under around 30 miles an hour and reducing its severity if you're traveling faster than that. An inclusive part of this package that we really like is the full auto brake element. Now let's say you're uh, momentarily distracted and you go to move off from a roundabout or come out of a turning directly in front of another car. Well, 
you won't be able to. Your V90 will detect that oncoming vehicle and automatically apply the brakes to prevent the accident. The other really notable standard electronic safety feature is called Pilot Assist. Now this is a setup that at cruising speeds can effectively drive for you. It's able to take care of the steering, the throttle and the braking on major roads, uh, reading the white lines on the road and keeping you firmly in between them. Plus it'll work with the standard adaptive cruise control to keep you a safe distance behind the car in front too, uh, slowing down and speeding up as necessary. Now, as with the Mercedes version of this system, which is an expensive extra on the rival E-Class estate model, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel for the system to be operable. Other standard safety features include more familiar things like Isofix child seat fastenings, uh, pedestrian friendly active bonnet and a road sign information display feature that pictures the road signs as you pass them and then displays them for you on the dash. The ABS setup has emergency brake assist for panic stops, uh, while the stability and traction control systems include spin control, corner traction control, and an engine drag control feature that stops the car from skidding when the gearbox sharply down changes on a slippery surface. Uh, there's plenty of standard electronic assistance to keep you in the right place on the road too. Um, road edge detection steers you back into the center of your lane if you veer slightly in towards the road edge. And a lane keeping aid does the same thing if you happen to veer over the lane delineation markings at cruising speeds. Now both scenarios are most likely to happen if you're feeling tired. So there's also a driver alert control system that monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. If you want to go further, you can pay extra for a blind spot information system that on the move at speed stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake another vehicle. Uh, this feature comes packaged up with three further things, auto dimming exterior mirrors, a cross traffic alert setup that warns you if you're reversing out of a space into the path of an oncoming car, and a rear collision mitigation system that uses rear facing radars to detect an impending rear end collision. Now if one's imminent, then your V90's real tail lights will flash to alert the oncoming driver at the same time as your seat belts are tightened and the brakes are applied. Uh, this is in order to prevent the vehicle being pushed out into the oncoming traffic. And finally, we'll mention the fact that if you specified that extra cost Volvo on-call app, you also get an emergency and roadside assistance support system that'll sense if your car's been involved in a collision and alert a trained operator to immediately contact your vehicle. Now, if no response is detected, then the emergency services will be instantly informed. It's all very reassuring. This V90 is something quite unique, a full-sized executive segment estate that will never have an engine any bigger than four cylinders and two liters in size. Now, first glance, that doesn't sound a very attractive proposition, does it? But with the Drive E engines fitted to this car, Volvo engineers have somehow matched the power output of many rival, bigger capacity six cylinder models while reaping the efficiency benefits of taking that smaller, lighter approach. Those benefits are considerable, but they can't be described as class leading in the case of the entry level 190 bhp D4 diesel model. Uh, the current segment standard is just too good for that. Nevertheless, the figures you get 62.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 119 grams per kilometer of CO2, though admittedly not as efficient as those you'd achieve in a rival Mercedes E220D estate, are quite good enough to slightly better the figures achieved by the other two main contenders that Volvo has to match here. BMW's 520D Touring and Audi's A6 Avant 2 litre TDI. And to give you some real world perspective on that, you're looking at getting about the same level of fuel economy as you could expect from a little ATPS 1 litre Ford Fiesta. And as a result, this car could theoretically manage a vast range of about uh, 760 miles from its 55 litre fuel tank. Where the Drive E strategy starts to give Volvo a real advantage in this segment though is when you move your attention further up the V90 range. Now do you expect this D5 twin pulse model's four cylinder engine to be cleaner and more frugal than rival six cylinder competitors like BMW's 530D Touring and Mercedes E 350D Estate? And it is, even though, unlike those competitors, uh, this pokier variant is saddled with the extra weight of all wheel drive. 
Go for the D5 and the official figures suggest that you'll be able to manage 57.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2, which means a car that will take you around five more miles on every gallon and put out around 10 grams per kilometre less of CO2 than the best of the two rivals I just mentioned. And thanks to a slightly larger 60 litre fuel tank, this V90 D5 can also match the lesser D4 variant in terms of its total operating range. Bear in mind that if you opt for the cross-country version, your running cost will be a little higher. You'd expect that with the D4 version, given the addition of four-wheel drive, uh, something that has quite an impact. In this guise, your V90 will return 54.3 miles per gallon and 138 grams per kilometer of CO2. Go for a D5 cross-country model and the figures are much different, 53.3 miles per gallon and 139 grams per kilometer. Overall though, we're looking at a pretty impressive efficiency showing from the two mainstream engines. So, how has Volvo done it? Well, through patient drive e technological development is the answer the company will give you. This having led to, amongst other things, uh, the groundbreaking iArt injection system. Now, by precisely metering exactly the right amount of fuel for each cylinder, iArt helps the engine run more smoothly while using less fuel. And further efficiency gains have been made through significant power plant weight savings and the reduction of internal friction in the engine mechanicals. More familiar efficiency measures haven't been neglected either. There's the usual stop-start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, um, when you're sitting in traffic or waiting at the lights and a frugally orientated eco mode in the drive mode settings system that tweaks the air conditioning along with all the vehicle's mechanical settings for economical use and gives you an eco drive meter, uh, though like most such devices, all this really does is show you whether your foot's on the throttle or not. Use the eco setting at cruising speed and an eco coast function will automatically be activated, disconnecting the engine so that you're merely traveling on the car's kinetic energy. And a prod on the throttle is all that's necessary to restore uh, normal powered motion. So you can monitor the effectiveness of all this. There's a driver performance section of the center console touchscreen showing graphically how your efforts towards frugality have fared over the miles. There is a stage beyond all this though for potential V90 owners to consider. Now just how efficient could this car be if all that drive e cleverness uh, were to be matched with the impressive possibilities of plug-in hybrid technology? Well, in the T8 twin engine variant, we have the answer to that question. The twin engine part of the name references the way that with this model, a uh, turbocharged and supercharged 320 bhp 2 litre petrol engine is mated to an 82 bhp electric motor driving the rear wheels and powered by a rechargeable 9.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. This isn't the only plug-in hybrid model in the full-sized executive estate segment, but it's certainly one that offers the uh, most appealing blend of frugality and performance. To be specific, official figures rate a V90 T8 as being able to achieve 134.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle, while putting out no more than 47 grams per kilometer of CO2. Although, of course, it won't be consuming any fuel or putting out any CO2 at all if you merely use the all-electric driving range which is rated at 28 miles. Now that is astonishing for a 407 bhp estate that's capable of getting to 62 miles an hour in just 5.2 seconds. As with all plug-in hybrids uh, this model offers the option of charging from mains power. Owners will be able to buy a wall box from Volvo that will charge their car on 16 amp power in about two and a half hours. If you're out and about and you can find a 10 amp public charging point, the charging time will be slightly longer, uh, three and a half hours, while connecting up to a normal domestic three pin six amp supply will take six hours. As with any plug-in hybrid, it's certainly true that in everyday use, you'll never actually achieve the official fuel and CO2 returns quoted, but the important thing is that the government believes them. So business users will be able to write down as much as 100% of the cost of a V90 T8 against their tax liability. And a 40% taxpayer could be driving this variant while incurring a benefiting kind tax bill of no more than around £100 a month. So if you're a business buyer browsing in this segment, these are figures that will certainly reward a bit of thought if you're just about to blindly sign on the dotted line for a conventional six-cylinder diesel model. 
Uh, what else? Um, residual values, well, they're key in this segment, of course, and you expect those of a big, relatively expensive Volvo luxury estate to lag severely behind the kind of figures you could realize in a rival BMW or Mercedes. You'd be wrong, though. The V90 is selling here in fairly restricted numbers, and that, along with this model's many other attributes, is likely to further improve Volvo's performance in the executive estate sector when it comes to depreciation. To the point where independent experts reckon that after owning a D4 model for the usual three-year, 60,000-mile ownership period, uh, you'd get between 39 and 41 percent of your original purchase price back, depending on the trim level you've chosen. That is pretty close to the kind of return you get from a rival Mercedes E-Class estate. So on to insurance groupings, which should be reasonably affordable by class standards. Uh, to give you an idea, expect your premium to be based on either Group 27E or 28E for the D4 diesel, which looks pretty good in comparison to, say, the Group 34 rating that's applied to arrival rival BMW 520D Touring. Move up to a V90 D5 like the car we're trying here, and you're looking at Group 33E or 34E. Maintenance should be relatively affordable for a car of this kind, with intervals every year or 18,000 miles. Uh, three or five year prepaid servicing packages are available to help you budget ahead. And if you pay extra for the useful on-call with app remote connectivity system, then this Volvo can be programmed to autonomously realize when a service is due and then automatically book it for you at a dealership of your choice. And finally, we'll tell you that the uh, warranty is the usual three-year, 60,000-mile package. So, how to sum up? Well, this is certainly a different kind of large Volvo estate, even if some of its attributes are reassuringly familiar. Things like class-leaning safety, solid build quality, and the feeling that if you were to buy it, this model would probably outlast you. All are classic Volvo virtues. What's different this time around, though, is the level of sophistication that's been brought to bear in terms of engineering and connectivity. For this V90, it's all been enough to create a seismic step forward over its V70 predecessor. Does it matter that the car doesn't provide the one thing you might expect from a large Volvo estate? Class leading carriage capacity? Well, we don't think so. For one thing, it's been a long time since any of the brand's big station wagons actually offered that, despite boxy looks that suggested otherwise. What's important is that the car is big enough for those who want a luxurious conveyance for antiques and grandfather clocks, but it's now also smart enough to interest those who previously wouldn't have seen themselves as Volvo people. Uh, folk who simply want a more stylish way to travel to Chamonix or to transport the family Labrador. As for issues with this V90, well, there aren't many, provided you can avoid the premium asking prices. Volvo certainly hasn't been shy when it comes to those. Still, in return, there's a compensation of high residual values and the feeling inside of properly distinctive luxury, rather than merely the kind of upgrade from a smaller, cheaper model that rivals offer. It is certainly true that this car's driving experience could be a little more involving. The Swedish engineers particularly need to learn from brands like Jaguar and BMW when it comes to steering feel, for example. Having said that, though, a more laid-back, luxurious, cosseting feel is all part of this car's appeal. It should feel different in the way that it does. In summary, then, what we have here is a car that offers a uniquely different choice in this sector. An estate that goes about its business with relaxed confidence and a smartly understated demeanour. If you've reached the point in life where that appeals and you're browsing this segment, well, you'll find plenty to like.